I'm going to prove to you that confidence is the number one problem that your child has to deal with. I'm going to tell you now they're not confident at all and it has more to do with their ability to manage their thoughts. Hello and welcome to A Teen's Perspective. I'm your host, Dr. RJ, and in today's episode, I'm going to prove to you that confidence is the number one problem that your child has to deal with. Now, I know uh, what many of you guys are thinking. If I had to ask a thousand parents, half would say like, yes, RJ, you're right. My kid is not confident at all. They don't have any friends. I can't get them to try anything new. They don't look at me when I'm talking to them, when they're talking to another adult, they're looking down. But then half of you parents are gonna be like, oh, RJ, what are you talking about? My kid is absolutely confident. They're a social butterfly. They have 10, 15, 20 friends. They talk all the time. They're so confident. But whether you are on the side where you believe your child is not confident, I'm going to prove to you that you're right, but not for the reasons you're thinking. And if you're on the side that, yes, my child is extremely confident, I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. And I'm going to prove to you that your child is not confident at all. Now, if you have not followed my channel, make sure you subscribe. It's very, very important because my job is to equip you parents with the tools to help your child maximize their potential. Now, uh, after you have followed me for some time, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice that a lot that I teach, you probably have never heard of. I've been doing this for many years and I've never read any of this in a book. No one's ever taught this to me. Uh, in fact, I have young kids, so I don't even have teenagers to kind of practice and try these, these tips on. So the question is, how did I get this unique uh, information that is transforming the lives of families all around the country? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's from the teenagers. Coaching so many teenagers, you start to find themes. You start to see that these teenagers are a lot sharper than you think. They actually have amazing feedback. And I've learned a lot from the teenagers as far as how a parent should approach this and what a parent should not do. But then I also have worked with so many parents, I start to see the things that parents who are successful, what they are doing. And the parents who are kind of struggling, what they are doing. And I combined all this together and I was able to create this kind of system that works for how you should properly parent coach a teenager. Now, notice I said parent coach, all right? I, I didn't say parent. I could never tell you how to parent your child. That is the parent's job. I mean, you know your child way more than I can ever uh, learn about your child. You know so much about them. But I can teach you how to be an effective parent coach. And if you don't know what I'm saying when I'm saying a parent coach, what I am sharing with you is that as a teenager grows and become closer to adulthood, they want their independence. So the parent actually should shift their roles. Remember, parents, we wear tons of hats, right? We're the, the doctor, the executioner, <laughs> you know, we're the chef, the maid, I and mean, we have to do it all as a parent. That's what we signed up for. But as they become older, I'm gonna ask you guys to put on a coaching hat because trust me, parents, I've been doing this for too long. There's so many opportunities that are missed because we're wearing a parent hat. If you would just wear like a coaching hat, you would see opportunities. You have a child that uh, doesn't wanna do their chores, that's an opportunity, okay? You have a child that hates school and won't turn in their homework, that's an opportunity. So like all these opportunities that we were missing because we're wearing the parent hat. You wanna just reprimand them. Give me your phone, give me your phone. Do you ever watch my TikTok? Yes, you take away the phone. Not a good thing. All right, this, you know, not a good thing. We take away phones for literally everything. For school stuff, for rolling their eyes, for talking back. You know, they forgot to say good morning. I mean, whatever, you would snatch the phone. Now, I do believe that, you know, punishments and consequences should fit. All right, if, if a child uh, is disrespectful to you, it's not because of their phone. All right, so that's not a good, you know, kind of consequence. But that's for a different topic. Because what I want to share with you, there are so many opportunities for parents to coach their children 
through things and that's what's gonna help them take it to the next level. Now I have plenty of trainings on that, plenty of videos, so definitely watch that. But what we're gonna talk about today is confidence. Confidence is everything, people. I can promise you that. Confidence is everything. Any issue that you are dealing with right now as a parent, I guarantee you I can link it to confidence. Your child is disrespectful to you. It's confidence. Your child hates school and they don't turn in their homework, they don't study. It's confidence. They don't have any friends. Well, that's confidence. So whatever uh, situation you can share with me, it all comes down to confidence. So let me address the two groups here. For the first group, you're like, hey, RJ, you're telling me something I already didn't know. I've been knowing for a long time. My kid is shy, they have no friends, and they're just not confident. So before we talk about this, we need to really dive into what confidence is. All right, so most people, and it's just mainly our culture, our society, we have a social society. So naturally, we connect confidence to one's ability to be social, essentially. So if you see a person who's out there smiling at everyone, talking, carrying on a conversation very easily, we would immediately be like, hey, that person's confident. I want to be like them. All right. But then we see a person that's more kind of to themselves, you know, not really looking up, maybe doing some work and not really interacting with people. We may say, hey, that person's not confident. But I'm going to tell you that's not actually true. It's just because our society is so social, we connect confidence to, to something that's social. And it is not always social. It's very possible that you can have a social butterfly and they are not confident in other areas of their life. It's very possible to have a person that's an introvert who say, listen, I could be social if I wanted to. Just don't want to. <laughs> you know, I enjoy just kind of kind of hanging with myself. All right. They can still be confident. So I definitely want to kind of address that whole extrovert introvert. It has nothing to do with confidence. All right? It has to do with energy. But in any case, what I'm trying to share with you is that, yes, if your child is shy, most likely they're not confident. They don't have any friends. They're not confident. But it's not because of the social aspect. It's because of the thoughts that are in their head and how they address those thoughts. So that is like the new definition I want to share with you is, is how we define confidence. A confidence is a person that can take control of their mind. That's all it is. All right. That's all confidence is. The ability of a person to take control of their mind. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a secret. You're not born confident. I'm sorry to tell you that you're not. So if you're like on the other group, it's like, oh, no. My child is confident. They have all these friends. They're a social butterfly. You know, they, they, hey, I ask them to do, uh, join a new sport. They'll, they'll run and do it, right? They're just so confident. No, they actually are not. Because I guarantee you, they are not training their mind. It's almost like if you tell me that, you know what? I have great endurance. And usually uh, you may say you are great at something because you're comparing yourself to someone else. And in this case, I want to give an example of someone who says, I have great endurance, even though I never walk or run or exercise. I just, I just have great endurance. And yes, that may be true compared to someone else who's worse than you, right? But when you think about, do you truly have great endurance? You probably don't because you never trained it. Well, confidence is the same way. You must train yourself to be confident. It's not a natural thing. That's, and it's not all about something social. So do not believe parents that because your child is smiling and has a bunch of friends that they're a confident person. Because I guarantee you, I've worked with over 7,000 teenagers. They're not confident because they haven't learned how to take control of the mind, how to manage those thoughts. They don't know how to do it. So they're just basically coming, you know, uh, going about what's natural to them. Oh, I'm an extrovert. I get energy from being around a lot of people, right? I naturally can feel like I can talk and hold a conversation with people. I'm confident, but that's not the case because guess what? They're one incident away from not being confident. They're one incident away from joining a new school, going out with their normal self, smiling, talking to people, and everyone giving them a cold shoulder or somebody calling them a weirdo, right? That would absolutely break confidence. You see it all of the time from kindergarten to middle school. More confidence have been broken from that transition than any other any other transition. And why is that the case? Because they never was equipped. That child never had the tools to take control of their mind. So thoughts come in. They don't know how to overcome those thoughts. 
And that's ultimately what confidence is about. So parents, I'm going to tell you now that whether your child is not confident because they're shy or you think your child is overly confident because they're conceited, I'm going to tell you now they're not confident at all and it has more to do with their ability to manage their thoughts. And that requires training. So if that's you parents, if you want to kind of address the root cause of a lot of the issues, you know, sometimes we see our kids who say, hey, uh, my kid's not disciplined. So we put them in karate. And we say, you know what, my kid is extremely disrespectful. So we'll put them in like a military camp or something. But just, that's just symptoms. Really, if you want to address the root cause of a lot of the issues, it's confidence. And that's where coaching uh, is next level. You know, when we compare coaching to, to, to therapy, it's no competition. Because we're addressing the heart at the matter, which is the overall confidence. That's my specialty. I work with teenagers and parents on this subject. So if you are a parent out there and you're like, yes, RJ, you know what? You're right. It's confidence. You know, my kid is kind of conceited, but now I know they're not confident. We need to equip them with the tools to manage their thoughts. They need to be the driver in their own mind. And that is only possible with training and coaching, just like anything else. I love basketball. I want to go play basketball. Naturally, I may be pretty good compared to some other people. But when I look at the grand scheme of things, and I'm playing multiple people in different types and sizes, I realize I'm not that great. So I need to be trained and I need a coach. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to confidence. So parents, I hope this was helpful. I'm looking forward to uh, making more videos and more podcasts for you guys because my job is for every single parent to be equipped with the tools to help their child maximize their full potential. Mm -hmm.